Okay, I already have the Venn diagram in front of me. Let's just go ahead and see how this plays out. So a certain number of learners are sitting for examinations in mathematics, tourism, and geography. 11.1, .1, draw a Venn diagram to represent all the learners sitting for these exams. So the idea with the Venn diagram is that we must start with the numbers that are in these spaces, right? And then we move outwards. That is easy when we do it in that way. If you start by these numbers, it becomes a little bit complicated. Let me show you how. So the first bullet point, all the learners seed for at least one of the examination. So that just tells us that there is no number outside. There is no learner that does not seed for an examination. So we have used that point. And then the second point, the total number of learners who seed for mathematics is 22. That point will help us as time goes on. But at this point, it's better if we just forget about it, right? Because it just says that the total number that should be here is 22. But it doesn't really help us with filling one specific spot. And then bullet number, bullet point number three, the same is true with bullet point number four. But if you look at the last bullet point, six learners sit for only tourism. That point is useful because we know that here we have six, right? We only have six that sit for only tourism. So it is a useful point. And then second last, three learners sit for tourism and geography, but not mathematics. So we know that the intersection between tourism and geography, we can put three there. We can put three. And then four learners sit for mathematics and geography, but not tourism. So in the intersection between mathematics and geography, we can put four. And then five learners sit for mathematics and tourism, but not geography. So mathematics and tourism, but not geography is five learners mathematics and tourism but not geography we can put five there okay and then the total number of learners sitting for geography is 18 but we have this spot which is not filled so let's skip that point and then another point we have the total number of learners sitting for tourism is 16. so you can see that in tourism we are only left with one spot which is the intersection between the three, right? So what number do we have in that spot? It is going to be 16, the total number of learners that are doing tourism, minus 5, 16, minus 5, minus 6, minus 3. And this gives us 2. So we have two learners that do that are going to sit for all the exams. So now the other points are useful because everything else is filled. Uh, the total number of learners sitting for geography is 18. So we have 18 minus 4 minus 2 minus 3, which gives us 9. When we add all these numbers, they will give us 18. And then for mathematics, it's 22. So 22 minus 4 minus 5 minus 2, that is 11. So this is our Venn diagram. Okay, 11.2. Uh, this is 11.1. .1. I don't think there should be any other alternative option here. That is the only thing you should have on your answer here. Nothing else, really. 11.2, calculate the probability that a learner chosen at random will sit for an examination in at least two. At least two means two or more. That's what at least two means. It means two or more. So which, well, what part of the Venn diagram are we interested in? Five sit for math and tourism. We're interested in that. We're interested in that three. We're interested in that four. And we're also interested in that two why because they do at least two they do three three is at least two okay so the probability is going to be equal to five plus four plus two plus three five four three two okay that is correct and then we divide by the total number of learners that are sitting for the examinations so five plus four plus two plus three plus six plus nine plus eleven uh, let me just verify yeah plus nine okay so the total is 40 yeah the total is 40 so the probability is gonna be five plus four plus two plus three uh, this is 14 so we are 14 over 40. let me just verify five four eleven fourteen okay so there we go that is the answer to 11.2 11.3 says that determine if the events of sitting for examinations in mathematics and Sitting for examinations in tourism are independent. Support your answer with the necessary calculation. So for two events to be independent, we need the P of math and 
tourism to be equals to p of math multiplied by p of tourism if this is the case then we do we deem the events to be independent so let's go ahead and see if this is true so p of m and t let's go ahead and find p of m and t so p of m and t is the intersection between tourism and mathematics right so it is five plus two right because five plus two lies on both of them so we have seven over 40. so seven over 40 that is 0 0.175 and now let's find probability of math multiplied by the probability of tourism so probability of math how many people are doing math we have 22 people that are doing math it is said there right so we're gonna have 22 over 40 multiplied by the probability of people that are doing tourism we have a total of 16 so 16 over 40 so 22 over 40 multiplied by 16 over 40 this is equal to 0 0.22 okay clearly we can see that 0 0.22 is not equal to 0 0.175 so these two events are not independent right